All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about how I got a software engineering job after being unemployed for about 15 months. For some time since I was became a software engineer, I was unemployed. And this was the same this is the same for many software engineers actually. But I'm going to use a term of unemployed that's kind of different than most other people think of. I'm going to say unemployed in my case was that I was working a job that I didn't really want to work because I knew I could work better jobs. So that's what I meant by unemployment because you might find in this story that I'll mention that I was unemployed even though like I worked as a teaching position for some time during this these 15 months. So everyone has to start from somewhere. So right after I graduated from the University of Florida with a degree in physics I was dumbfounded with what kind of job I could get because I didn't know what to get with a degree in physics. I either wanted some kind of engineering degree or maybe some software programming job because I hear some, I heard some physics majors could get that job and I didn't really want to go to grad school because I didn't want to go, to, I didn't want to study, I didn't want to study physics anymore. It was also a bit late for grad school so I couldn't go to grad school until probably like the next year since that's kind of how like grad school works. So I applied for jobs the whole summer after I graduated. So I couldn't find like any jobs, even though I applied pretty much every day, all day. Like if, if my full-time job was pretty much to apply for jobs. And I guess I wasn't doing it right because I didn't really get many calls. And if I did, there was a lot of competition for jobs because I wasn't applying in the right places either. For example, there was this one time where there was like 80 people trying to apply for this one software engineering position. Like it was right, right after college and of course, I didn't make it because I was competing with computer science majors and I had a physics degree. So you can kind of see why I didn't make it there. So it was the end of the summer and I was getting desperate for the job I wanted. And I, I would take any job at that point, really. And it was about time to move out of my college apartment because my lease was up and to move into my mom's house because I wasn't going to sign a lease in my college town again. And I didn't have my money. I did, yeah, I didn't have any money at that point. No money, no jobs. It's kind of sad. So I decided to apply to high school teaching jobs because my high school friend got a job teaching at the high school I went to. And at this point, though, the, t the school year had already started for high school. So I thought it would be hard for me to find a job, except there wasn't actually an open teaching position to teach physics at the high school I went to. So I thought this was like the dream come true. Maybe I'll just teach physics the rest of my life. And <laughs> I'm kind of glad that didn't happen though. So yeah, so I didn't get the job. So I decided to broaden my search to other teaching positions. So maybe I can teach like math and maybe biology and other sciences maybe. So I tried to apply to like more broader positions because at this point I really needed a job. I didn't want to be like the guy without a job at his mom's house, which I was for like a week. <laughs> so that's something. And I'm thinking back on it now and I would gladly live with my parents more if I could because it, it costs less money to live with them. But uh, well, I only really lived with her until I could get on my feet again, which was maybe like six months. So I got a teach, uh, teaching position, teaching biology, high school biology, like freshman biology, and like geometry, which I thought I could teach both because they're both somewhat math and science related. So I thought to myself, the math should be easy to teach since I worked with math all throughout college. But the biology should be the more difficult one since I didn't really know any biology. I took biological physics in college, but that wasn't biology, that was more physics. <laughs> I mean, it was in the physics department, but I hadn't taken biology since AP biology in high school. So I thought, yeah, this is going to be difficult. I'm probably going to have to learn along the way. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I passed AP biology, but it wasn't like, I got a four, not a five. So I didn't realize though, after I accepted the position, that I would be teaching four biology classes and one geometry class. So I, I thought it was going to be more, more geometry than biology. But at that point, like, I, I was a little bit overwhelmed. I would have to really know my biology. Otherwise, I'd be, I can't teach this. And not only that, I didn't know the, like, like the subjects. I was teaching not the, our kids that were, weren't the, like, most behaving. Like, it was, it was, they didn't really want to learn. So this was probably one of the toughest uh, experiences of my life, teaching people that didn't want to learn and something that I didn't know, though I did want to learn it. But uh, it, was, it was hard for me. So at, at the end, I knew I had to get away from teaching. 
So I started applying to engineering jobs again. I think I applied to a little bit of engineering jobs, like in the middle of teaching, but at that point I, I was just kind of tired of applying, kind of in the middle of the teaching. So at the end of my teaching like career, which wasn't very long, I knew that what I was doing to apply for jobs for like engineering, software engineering, like chemical engineering, electrical engineering, I would take any job engineering related at that point in time. But it was hard because I wasn't an engineer, I was a physics physics major, not a physicist, <laughs> because I wasn't very good at physics. Well, I mean, I, I was okay at physics, but I mean, you kind of have to be to, to get the degree. But I, I knew I had to change up my approach to applying for jobs, especially if I wanted to get a software engineering job, which would require a lot more like rigorous understanding of code. So what I did, I knew I had to change something. So I read the book, Cracking the Coding Interview. Well, I mean. I didn't like practice all the stuff in it, but I mean, I read, the, read it and got a general understanding of what I had to learn. So I didn't mention, but this was all happening in the Tampa Bay area and it's not really the biggest tech hub. So I really wanted the job there for a couple of reasons, but I, I only applied for positions in Tampa, which was probably not the best idea. I probably would have applied more broadly and maybe put like my address as like, hey, I, lived, I live in Silicon Valley. Maybe that would have been better. Maybe I could have got more jobs, but oh well. But anyways, that summer I got an interview for a software engineering position, kind of, or kind of like an internship kind of thing, where I would be coding one of their, um, their screen readers. So it was JAWS, if you ever, ever, heard, ever heard of it. So it was an all day interview, and I had never experienced an all day inter interview before. Like my interviews when I was like a teacher, we're like 30 minutes over the phone, like, are, are you good? <laughs> that was like the interview for teaching. Software engineering, that was on a different level. And it was a, very rigorous and kind of like exhausting at the end of the day. Like, I just wanted to get over it. And I, I kind of that's kind of see why I didn't get the job because I wasn't ready for that kind of interview. Even though I probably answered the questions, some of the questions pretty well, probably not the coding ones very well since I hadn't coded in a long time, really. So they use C++ there, and I hadn't used C++ since like my third year of college or something like that. So of course I didn't get the job, but it was a good interviewing experience. So I didn't give up though, I never gave up. And I moved out of my mom's house because I had some money from teaching. Like at the end of the teaching, they'll give you the, like the money for the summer that like teachers normally get for working since they, they're off the summer. So I moved out into an apartment, like I subleased this guy's apartment for like the rest of the summer, which was like three months. So I kind of had a like an ultimatum. I had to get a job by the end of the summer or I wouldn't, or I would have to move in with my parents again, which I didn't want to do. So at this point I applied more rigorously to jobs. I even applied to places like in different states. Like I looked up big name companies. I applied to them. I like tethered my resume. I made, created like so many different resumes, like, so many different engineering resumes. Like I had computer science resumes. I had like electrical engineering resumes. I like, I even wanted to do like optical engineering as well since I studied that in high school or co college as well. And I thought if I couldn't get this, then I would have to go back to college. And maybe I was thinking of getting a bachelor's or going for a master's like optical engineering, which seemed cool at the time, but I'm kind of glad I didn't go that, down that route because I didn't want to go back to school. So I even started crafting like more cover letters for jobs. Like I would tailor like my cover letters. I, they would kind of be like copy pastes, but I, like I would put the company at the end. And I don't even know if people read those cover letters. I'm sure some people did, but I don't think that really played a role in me getting a job. So I applied all summer and I got some interviews and some calls from recruiters. Like and they asked me to like meet the recruiters and stuff like that, but it never really led to me like getting interviews at like, or main interviews at companies. It was kind of like talking to recruiters and I guess they never wanted to go through with me. So I guess it was pretty depressing going through all that. So eventually I interviewed for some chemical engineering slash like water processing company. They would filter or they would use these big filters and they would use that to filter water basically. So they asked me chemistry questions in that interview and I hadn't learned chemistry or used chemistry since like four years prior to that and when I took chemistry in college. So not only did I have to learn biology for the teaching position, I had to learn or use, remember my chemistry 
for this job. And then I, I actually got, I passed the interview for this chemical engineering thing. And they gave me a trial period of one week, basically on that job of paid work to see if I would could get the job. And at the end of the day, I didn't want to do this job because it was a lot of physical work, like moving buckets of chemicals, measuring pH and stuff like that of large quality, like containers of, of chemicals. And then like, I was basically cleaning these big, I mean, not manually cleaning them, but like using big machines to clean these big filters. And I thought it was an interesting job, but I, I guess I learned a lot and I, I learned that I didn't want to do that kind of manual. It wasn't manual labor. It was just more physical than I wanted to do. Like this is not why I majored in physics for four years. I didn't want to move around big buckets of chemicals. So at about the same time though, uh, one of the boot camps like I applied to asked me if uh, I can interview for them. And so I interviewed for them. I passed their interview, I guess. Well, actually they said to study like the main like web development languages like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Java. I didn't know any HTML, CSS, any JavaScript. I knew Java though, so that, that was something. But I didn't really know, I hadn't used Java for like three years, four years since like beginning of college basically. So I, I studied all of that. They gave me seven days and I, I went ham on this. I studied like all day, every day on all these core like HTML, CSS stuff. And I guess I was good enough for them. And I got into the boot camp, and in the end, they trained me in like coding, like JavaScript, Java, CSS, HTML, React, and server-side technologies like Spring, and then Express. Some of these might be like outdated at this point in time, but I felt like I learned a lot at the end of the job, or not a job. It was a boot camp, basically, basically going to class to learn all this stuff. It was 11 weeks or 12 weeks. I don't know, it felt like forever because once at the boot camp, I would learn. And then when I went home, I would work on the projects that they would assign to us and study that because I knew I wanted to get a job in software engineering at this point. I, I guess I gave up on all the other engineerings because I knew software engineering would pay the most, probably give me the best lifestyle as well. So. So before this boot camp, I didn't know what I had to learn. Like I didn't know which, like what languages to learn to get me a job or what technologies to learn to get me a job. And I would have learned them if I knew what they were to learn, if you know what I mean. So like me before the boot camp was kind of like me throwing darts at a wall when I was blindfolded. And I, I had no idea what I was learning. I was just learning random stuff, like random algorithms, random languages and that didn't work for me. So I, I kind of needed a boot camp to show me what to learn, even though like I could have learned it myself. They kind of taught me. And then I, I, I guess learned through like looking up the, the languages and stuff. So after the boot camp, I interviewed at a company and got a position, software engineering, uh, develop using React and Lambdas. So I thought that was cool. And uh, yeah, that's how I got a software engineering job after um, a long time. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my, my story, though it kind of was long, but it kind of got the gist of my experience. Uh, if you liked the video, can you uh, subscribe for getting through this whole point and um, like the video as well. So uh, thanks for watching.